Learn Java the Hard Way, Exercise 2, More Printing. The previous exercise might have been pretty difficult for you uh, because there was a whole lot of new things in there. So there's nothing new in this exercise. This is just additional practice to typing in a basic program, um, saving it into the properly named file, compiling it, and running it. So because that's, that's something you're going to need more practice with. So I've already typed this program in. I've saved it as gasolinereceipt.java. And if you, if you have an older version of this book, this, this file may be something different. So sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change into the Java code directory, if I'm not already. So I type cd Java code. And then my prompt changes to show that I'm in the Java code directory. And then I'm going to compile Java C gasoline receipt, gasoline R E C E I P T dot Java. And there were no errors, so it does not display anything there. Maybe you made a mistake and it, it didn't work out right. Then I'm going to run it, run the bytecode file, gasoline R E C E I P T, gasoline receipt. And there's my little receipt in the terminal window there. So let's go back and talk about the code briefly. So um, line one is very similar to line one of the previous assignment. It says public class gasoline receipt. You'll notice that the public class name is gasoline receipt. And the file name is gasolinereceipt.java. That's not a coincidence. In Java, every file must contain exactly one public class. And the name of that public class has to be the same as the name of the file. So I'm not going to explain what public class means because that's going to be way too complex to try to understand at this stage in your learning. But I promise uh, eventually when when you're better at coding, I will explain what public class means. Okay, so some good news. Lines 2, 3, and 4 are identical to what they were in the previous exercise. So this is an open curly brace. Then there's a tab, public static void main, a left paren or an open paren, a space, the word string with a capital S, a open and close square bracket there, a space, uh, the word args, and then another space, and then a closed paren or a right paren. Then line four starts with a tab and has an open curly brace again. Line five has two tabs. Then we see system.out.println again, uh, open paren, a space, this uh, long string in double quotes, and then a space and closed paren and a semicolon. All in all, there are 12 printing statements here, 12 print line statements. And if you're a little bit OCD and you want to make yours look exactly like mine, I can tell you that there are 24 dashes on that line. Um, that's just a minus sign or a dash or a hyphen. When you're working with a text file, those basically are all the same character because that's the only one that you can get to show up on your screen by pressing a single key on the keyboard. Um, so all those dashes there. On line 6 here, uh, this character is called a pipe. You may not be familiar with that one um, unless you were doing a lot of Unix programming but the pipe character is um, is on the keyboard on my keyboard anyway the the United States keyboard it is just above the enter key and uh, you have to hold shift to get it to appear it's on the same key as the backslash character is so shift plus backslash will get me that and then I put some spaces here so 24 spaces and then a pipe and then all the rest of the stuff that's typed in as you go here. And then again, we end with a closed curly brace, uh, two closed curly braces, because we have two sets of curly braces that are open, so we need to close all the ones that we have open. Um, you might have noticed there's kind of a symmetry in code. Every time you open a parenthesis, you're going to eventually close that parenthesis. If you open a quotation mark, you're going to eventually close that quotation mark. If you open a square bracket, you're going to close that square bracket. If you open a curly brace, you're going to close that curly brace. So there's a nice symmetry to code there, um, which means you have to be good with details. Um, 
but if you are good with details, then, then coding is, is kind of soothing in that way. So a couple things I would point out, um, some common errors here. One is misspelling something, getting the capitalization incorrect. Um, but another one might be that when you go, you type all this in, and then you go to run it, and when you run it, it doesn't look right. It doesn't line up. It lines up here, but then when you run it, it doesn't line up there. So probably what you've done, if you're anything like my students, is instead of putting spaces here, you've put tabs. Now, I don't ever put tabs inside of the quotation marks, really, because it's too hard to tell them apart. But let's say I had done that. I had put some tabs in there. So notice it looks like that. So I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to compile gasoline, R-E-C-E-I-P-T dot Java. And then I run it, gasoline receipt. See how that pipe character is way far away from the other one? You may say, well, what's going on there? Well, that's because the tab character, you can see it spaces over a certain amount right there. It spaces over usually only about four spaces in your code. That's because we have gone here into the preferences and we have said the tab width is four. Okay, that means that this will not take up a ton of space, so it's easier to see a lot of code at once. Um, so it takes up a couple lines here, four four lines there, four lines there. But then when you go to run it in the console window, in the terminal window, the tabs, which are four spaces here, get expanded to eight spaces in here. So it doesn't line up. So what, the way to fix that is to just go in here and just highlight all this, everything in between these two, and then just delete it all, and then just hold down the space bar to make sure that you only have spaces in there. So if your code doesn't line up, it, it's that's almost certainly what you've done. R-E-C-E-I-P-T dot Java, and then run the byte code with the Java virtual machine, and there everything lines up as expected. So there you go. Hopefully you were able to get through that pretty well. Um, we're going to be doing something new in the next exercise, so uh, happy coding.